Assalamu alaikum, I'm Joe Bradford and welcome to Inside My Library. Today we're going to be talking about the No Asshole Rule by Robert Sutton. It was published in 2007. And as you've guessed, this is about assholes and how you shouldn't let them be around you or be one of them. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But if it's your first time here, I do book reviews every Wednesday. So be sure to subscribe to my channel below and also enable alerts so you can get all my new videos. So what is the No Asshole Rule? Well, it's the elimination of negative influences from people in your life. Now, I know that some of you out there are watching and you're going to have issues with the title of this book. Let me just say that this type of straightforward phrasing is important at times to drive the message home. And when I review Imam Bukhari's Al-Adab Al-Mufrad, I'll talk a little bit more about the use of seemingly shocking language for driving a point home. So, this book helps you pinpoint who negative people are and how they influence your life. It also gives you a self-diagnostic test to help you tame your inner jerk or your inner negativity. While the book can at times be repetitive, which is to be honest, uh, the case with many books in the self-help genre, it, it is good. If you like repetitiveness, it'll help you a lot. If you don't, like me, then you can easily skim through the stories and glean what's useful from them. So how do you identify somebody who's an asshole? Well, if they constantly demean others, are toxic in their tone and approach, and literally not a joy to be around, then they probably are one. You're probably dealing with an asshole. Some call this the Richard Branson test, and that is look at how a person treats the people that are powerless. And this attitude can manifest itself in different ways. It can be personal insults. The person could invade your, your, your private area, uh, uninvited physical contact, threats and intimidation, both verbal and nonverbal and microaggressions, sarcastic jokes and teasing, attacking your status and who you are, publicly shaming you, rude interruptions while you're having a conversation, with people acting two-faced and, and attacking you because of that, and then giving you dirty looks and kind of treating you as if you're non-existent. You can't change how other people are and how they act, but you can control how you react to them and not allow them to steal your composure. And this is what this book is about. It gives you guiding principles for identifying people that are assholes and steering clear of them. Number one, say the rule, write it down, act on it. Number two, limit your exposure to people that are like this. Don't be around them. That will limit their influence on you. Also, you have to learn to detach yourself from tense situations and not allow yourself to take things personally or blame yourself for other people's bad behavior. Also, have low expectations. Don't expect much from people that are like this. Another important thing is the book talks about is gaining mental control knowing that you do not need to kowtow to someone because they're a bully. Learn to stay calm, stand your ground, even if by being there physically, you're not there in the moment. Mentally, you're in control of yourself. Another way that you can control this is not trying to prove yourself to this person, but instead stand on your principles. Work on building a support ne network within the people that you and this person are around and people that recognize their toxic behavior. And if you can't cope with that toxic behavior, then get out of those toxic situations. You don't deserve to be badgered and abused by a person and constant exposure to a negative person can have an effect on you and actually turn you into exactly what they are. The last point of the book is don't be an asshole yourself. It won't help you get ahead. It won't help you in life. It'll only let people villainize you. So a large portion of this book is dedicated to managers and people that work in organizations, and it gives some guidelines for enforcing the rule. Number one, keep people like this out of the hiring process because they will hire people like themselves. Treat them like incompetent employees, and if you can, fire them fast. Don't empower them because power for them breeds nastiness, and they will misuse it. Also, as a manager, manage moments, not just practices and policies, and systems. And that means that you as, an, as a manager have to be able to identify that negative activity and then go full on against that neg negative activity with your power as a manager. As a manager, fight as if you're right. Listen as if you're wrong. And that means that you yourself have to model proper confrontation and dispute resolution skills in front of your employees and in front of your team. 
And if you have to have a person who's an asshole around, then adopt the one asshole rule. Make examples of bad behavior rare in your organization. Don't reward bad behavior. And then you also have to quell your inner jerk. You have to make sure that you're focused on cooperation, not on negativity. So there's a lot more that could be discussed in this book. It talks about the costs and the consequences of letting people like this into your organization, the damage that it does to victims and to coworkers, the distractions that it creates and takes you away from getting things done and affects overall morale, transparency, and health. The end of the book is particularly helpful if you yourself are prone to this type of negative behavior and it can help you recognize how not to engage in that behavior if you are. So anyone working in organizations with multiple employees should read this book. Anyone who's in corporate should read this book. Anyone who's a nonprofit should read this book. For some people, it'll be a survivor's guide, and for others, it'll be a handbook on how to reform your negative behavior. I personally have benefited from this book and the strategies that it gives for minimizing the number of negative people that I interact with, as well as reforming some of my own negative behavior. All in all, if you can get past the repetitive storytelling in places and you can get past maybe your inhibitions towards the title that can be shocking, you can derive a good amount of benefit from this book, reform yourself, and also diminish the amount of negativity that's found in your life. Uh, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share. Let me hear from you in the comments what you thought about this book and if you've read anything similar that you could re recommend to us and I'll see you next time inside my library.